Hang on! I got something for you. Sindri! Coming! Before you go traipsing off into the dawn, I thought you'd like to have this back. Hmm. Well, don't go getting too cheery about it. But you're welcome. I've collected what we need to find the Norns. Shall we go? Madam Neethog? Madam Neethog, where have you been? Neethog? I suspect we may have consequences to look forward to. Squirrel. Ah, Master Kratos, my apologies. Madam Neethog's disappearance weighs heavily on my mind. She a friend of yours? Less a friend than another longtime tenant of the tree. She was here even before I arrived, and that was ages ago. To even think something could keep her away from her babies. Terrible, just terrible. Alfheim? What's there? We still have unfinished business there. We found a Hofgufa out in the Barrens, my lady. In terrible pain. We freed it, but there's another in turn somewhere beneath the Forbidden Sands. A Hofgufa? I haven't seen one since I was a child. And what else? There's still that secret elven library in Alfheim. Lead the way. I've always wondered, why was Freya so revered here so quickly upon his first arrival? Well, to begin with, it wasn't his first arrival. Very few know this, but Freya was one of the earliest visitors to Alfheim, back in the dawn of realm travel. Oh? A bit before my time. Do you tell. We believed for a long time that all the giants had died in the Flood, until one of them appeared in Vanaheim. Her name was Gerth, and she came offering to teach us the secrets of traveling between realms using Bifrost light. Freyr became immediately infatuated with her. He always yearned to wander, and along came someone who could truly show him how. Wait. Let us look this way. Much of the sand has been cleared away, but another storm rages beyond that pass, which must mean... Another half -gufa. Odd. It looks as though the Light Elf sealed off this section of the Barrens. Why? Luckily for us, a very considerate goddess has enhanced our magic chisel, and we can unseal it. My. That is lucky. The Forbidden Sands lay beyond. Contested territory, according to Bela. And another storm to endure. I remember when Freya and I traveled to this realm as children. The desert was healthy and full of life back then. I can't help but fear that era has ended for good and our efforts here are futile. It's a fair concern. Healing this land will take more than a pair of singing half -gufa. But I have to believe in the long run, we're doing right by Alfheim.
Well, best we start looking for a way underground. Keep a lookout for a cave. Put it on one of my horns. Let's see if I can pull it off. No. archive of knowledge. No sign of the light elves. For now. Maybe they've left for the day, and we can browse at our leisure. the Valing Schematics, eh? You know of him? Aye. One of the most gifted dwarven smiths around. Until he developed a conscience, anyhow. These rooms... These texts alone are not enough to end the Elven War. But restricting their access only serves those who wish to prolong it. Taking a page out of Odin's book. Aye. Quite the advantage for the Light Elves. All this knowledge of their ancestors. Their shared history, poetry. Just sitting here. Forgotten. Hmm? What a waste. an inscription. Consul. Strickfear spoke of an exile of the same name. Odds are he'd like a gander at that particular text.
Papa. Ah, it appears the librarian would like a word. Lotta Framborg. Sounds like she wants that journal back. No. Shield strike now! knowledge away. Our ally wishes to read this journal. We are taking the book. I'm impressed. Thought you were going to end her. When last we traveled here, after Faye passed, I killed an elf of great importance. The ramifications were dire for his people. I do not wish to make the same mistake twice. appreciate our work here in the desert. I wonder if he knows how poorly this realm has fared in his absence. Aye. Hearing the Song of the Sands again is a rare privilege, even if it's only a solo act. Or a duet, once this Hakbufa is free. Not of the Dark Elves. An abandoned ancient settlement, by the looks of it. 
Built long before the Lightwell's creation. More hive matter as well. I'd say we're on the right track then. it from down here. <gasps> this kind of hive material is sensitive to sound. How odd. When I last came here with you and Atreus, I assumed the absence of Alfheim's light was an aberration. I didn't realize it was covered by hives. Aye. And as far as the Dark Elves are concerned, it's that light column in the center of the temple that's the aberration. Just look at how old some of these surfaces are. Far older than the light well, or even our trapped Hathgifer for that matter. That's quite the empathetic perspective, Mimir. Well, dangle from a burly god's backside for a few winters, and you'll find yourself looking for all sorts of new perspectives. Watch on the left! The Alpha! 
Incoming poison! <laughs> travel underneath the barrens, do they? Territory changes hands often in Nalfheim, or so it appears. Big Vier did mention that these ruins have historical significance for the Light Elves. I assume they're only here to keep intruders out. Well, at least they tried. I suspect the corpse below would disagree. That dense hive is blocking the way. There must be a way past. Good eye. Let's continue, shall we?
Goofers will allow them to breed again. It was a dazzling display once. The skies of Alfheim filled with their song. I imagine it's the lack of fresh light that's caused this pair to grow abnormally large. No use in having babies if there's nothing for them to feed on. Trying to protect their children from a harsh world. I can relate.
I wonder if these two comprehend the choice they face once freed. What choice do you speak of? The life cycle of the Hafgufa. In order to breed, they must pass on their light to their children. And without light, they will die. I suppose that's all any of us can hope for in the end. That our death has purpose. That we can live on through our children. Given another chance,
Almost there. Back to the surface, then. Used in many of Freyr's blessings, I imagine. It reminds me of a story. Does it? There once was a blacksmith whose king commanded him to construct a box that could contain all the evils of the world. But no metal could hold such a power. So the blacksmith used the flame Kratos, of... is this 
a story meant to ease my grief? Perhaps it is just a story. A way to pass the time. I appreciate the sentiment, but... Well, your stories... What about my stories? I wouldn't exactly call them a comfort. Fair. Mamir is the better storyteller. Now don't sell yourself short, brother. You've come a long way from the days of laconic fable. It's okay. Finish your story. The blacksmith's daughter was the key to unlocking the box. He died trying to protect her from those who would open it. Well, at least it's a relatable story. Years we've overstayed our welcome in our time. <laughs> solace in knowing you did what you thought was best for your son's safety. Even these creatures know there is little choice for a parent. You are not alone. <sighs> I'm not, am I? And now neither are they. Thank you, Kratos. This land sings once more. We've done good here.
No rush to leave yet, is there? Who knows what kind of adventures await us in a freshly lit barrens? I'm a giant. I guess there's just one thing I don't understand. The giants called me... Loki? A question for another day.